Well, praise the Lord, word in season. This is the day that the Lord has made. We will rejoice and be glad in it. Is anybody glad just to be in the house of the Lord? And if anybody glad to be watching online, why don't you put your hands together right where you are. Put some clapping emojis on the screen if you're here with us. We want to welcome you to Word in Season Ministries, where for every season there is a Word in Season. If you're a guest with us this morning here in the house, if you don't mind, would you just wave your hand at us? We're so glad to have you here this morning. And if you're a guest and you're watching online, would you type guests in the comments and let us know where you're watching from? We just want to love on you. We're a loving church. We're a hugging church. And we know we can't hug just yet. So would you just virtually love on somebody? If you see somebody next to you here in the building, would you wave at them? Tell them that you love them with the love of Jesus Christ. It's an exciting time, a wonderful time just to worship the Lord. For we know we serve a risen Savior, and we're here to give him the glory, the honor, and the praise. Would you just do it for just a couple seconds? Would you just open up your mouth and exalt the King of Kings, the Lord of Lords? Would you just say something to him on this morning? Tell him how great he is, how thankful you are. Father, we bless your holy name, for there's none like you, none in heaven nor on earth. No one compares to you. And no one can do the great things that you do. So we'll continue to lift you up, Lord. We'll continue to magnify your name, O King of Kings, O Lord of Lords, O Holy One, O Great Sustainer, Great Ruler, Ruler of our hearts, Ruler of the nations. We love you this morning, Jesus. We love you this morning. We adore you. We worship your name. We're not ashamed to call on the name of Jesus. <laughs> Do I got anybody that's like me? You're not ashamed to call his name. Say, Jesus. <laughs> oh, Jesus. Hallelujah to your name. That great name. <laughs> that matchless name. Yes, God. Yes, God. There's power in the name of Jesus. Anybody need to feel the power of the Lord this morning? <laughs> Wherever you are, if you open up your mouth and call on that name, <laughs> I promise you he'll show up. <laughs> Jesus, yeah, Jesus, we love you, we adore you, we magnify you, yeah, hallelujah. The name of the Lord is a strong tower, the righteous run to it and they are safe. So we're literally calling down safety this morning. I feel the Lord in this atmosphere this morning. I'm excited. I'm ready to praise him, worship him. But before we get started, let's go to our scripture reading this morning. It comes from the book of Psalms, the 29th chapter, verses 1 and 2 in the NIV version. And it says, ascribe to the Lord, you heavenly beings. Ascribe to the Lord glory and strength. Ascribe to the Lord glory, do his name. Worship the Lord in the splendor of his holiness this is why we've come on this morning let us pray father we worship you we ascribe to you the glory that's due to your name the glory that's due to you all in this world lord god father for we know that there is no one else like you and we love you lord god for sending your son jesus to die on the cross and we know as we celebrated last week that he is not dead but he is yet alive he's living in us he's living in this world and we come to magnify the name of the Lord and continue to make his name great in this place. Father, we pray for our service, our worship experience on this morning. We say, have your way right now, Lord God. Anything that's not of you, we say, remove it right now in the name of Jesus so you can fill this place with your power, with your might, with your spirit, with your presence, oh God. We're expecting you this morning. We came with a spirit of expectancy, ready to praise, Lord God, ready to worship, ready to give you glory, Lord God, for we know that you do great and marvelous things, Lord God. We're expecting you to do great things this morning, Lord God, for our neighbor, for our brother, for our sister, even for us, oh God, for that's the kind of God that you are. You just do great things, oh God. Continue to blow our minds. We even pray for the word of God that will go forth on this morning, that it will pierce our hearts, that we would never be the same, that we could go out and live this word, Lord God, that we would practice what we hear, what we say, Lord God, that we would be doers of your word. This is our prayer and our heart's desire. It's in the name of Jesus we all pray. Everybody say amen, amen, 
and amen. Put your hands together. Let's celebrate the name of the Lord in here. We're going to call on Jesus. I need you to clap just like this. Come on, right where you are, clap like this. Let me see if y'all up this morning. Repeat after me. Say it like this. Say, oh, 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 oh,
Easter Sunday is exciting, but even the next Sunday for me right after, to know that Jesus did it all for me, to know that he did it all just for me, if there was nobody else, that he was still would have done it just for me. Come on, we're going to keep singing, but let me tell y'all something real quick. Let's go to F. We're going to keep singing, and in Isaiah chapter 6, it says, in the year King Uzziah died, I saw the Lord seated on the throne, and the train of his robe filled the temple and the whole earth was filled with his glory and it's significant you got to know the story of King Uzziah he reigned for about 52 years and he was like the safety net the confidence the idol of the people then so as long as King Uzziah was there on the throne they had confidence that everything was going to be okay as long as he was up there they knew that things were working out fine but then the king died and when he, when he died, Isaiah said, in the year he died, I saw the Lord seated on the throne. He didn't see the Lord until the king died. And for some of us, we have some King Uzziahs in our lives. It may be some idols. It may be your job. It may be your spouse or your, 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 your girlfriend, boyfriend. It may be uh, some hobbies that you like. But there may be an idol, something that's blocking you from seeing the Lord. <laughs> Something that's blocking you from seeing his beauty, from seeing the train of his robe filling the temple, from seeing how good and pleasant it is just to be with him. So we pray even on this morning that God would open up our eyes and we could see his beauty. Somebody say, open my eyes, Lord. I want to see you. He's beautiful. Clap your hands just like this. We're going to have some fun this morning, y'all. Listen. I saw the love. Seated on his throne And the train of his robe It filled the temple <laughs> And day and night, night The angels proclaim Yes they did Y'all listen Oh they say Glory, glory Is the Lord God Almighty Who was in his name Let's say it like this. Be exalted, be lifted, be lifted by the King of heaven. You get the glory. Yes. 
seen you work miracles and that's beautiful oh it's beautiful I'll open my eyes to see you you're so beautiful anything in the way move it down so I can behold your beauty you got eyes like fire and hair like wool you got feet like grass say isn't he beautiful Say, isn't he beautiful? Isn't he beautiful? We want to behold your beauty, yeah. Say, isn't he beautiful? Isn't he beautiful? Nobody like you, Lord. Isn't he beautiful? Isn't he beautiful? You've been a way maker for me, and that's so beautiful. beautiful. You've opened doors for me, that's so beautiful. beautiful. You've been my keeper, yeah. Isn't he beautiful? Isn't he beautiful? You've never left my side. Isn't that beautiful? Say, isn't he beautiful? Isn't he beautiful? Nobody like my God, yeah. Isn't he? Isn't he beautiful? Oh, 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 oh. say, isn't he beautiful? Isn't he beautiful? <laughs> None can compare to you, Lord. Say, isn't, isn't he, he beautiful? Yes, he is. Come on, we gotta go. Say, isn't he beautiful? Isn't he beautiful? Eyes like fire and the hair like wood. Isn't he beautiful? Feet like grass. Oh, Let's do it. Be exalted. Say, be exalted. Be lifted. Oh, yeah. King of heaven. You get the glory, Lord. Our creation will testify that your Jehovah. Somebody open up your mouth and give glory to our great Jehovah. <laughs> the Lord who sits high on the throne, we give you glory. Hallelujah. Come on, put your hands together one more time for Jesus. We exalt you. We lift up your name. Hallelujah. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. Any grateful people in the house of the Lord? Thank you, Lord. You may take your seats as you show your gratefulness. At this time, I want you to point your attention to the screens. This Sunday morning, we're not only celebrating our risen Savior, but we're also honoring and acknowledging Autism Awareness Month. So we have a very special message from the Nash family. They're going to point your attention to the screens and receive this message at this time. Hello, Wisdom. Hello, family. Thank you so much for having us virtually as you celebrate Autism Awareness Sunday. We count it a privilege and an honor to celebrate and be a part of this wonderful event. We have three things that we want to share with you on today. The first is what we want wisdom to know about autism. What's it like for a family helping somebody that has disabilities? And lastly, what is the church's responsibility for those with disabilities and their families? So what should wisdom know about autism? Let's talk about it. Autism is a developmental disability that affects the way that a person communicates, behaves, and interacts with others. It is a spectrum disorder, 
meaning that it affects everyone differently. Currently, one in every 54 children in the United States has been diagnosed with autism. Autism affects persons of all races, but there are some health disparities at play. For example, Black children are more likely to receive a late diagnosis of autism than white children. This is an issue because we know that early intervention, such as speech therapy and occupational therapy, can help improve a child's ability to learn and acquire necessary skills over the span of their lifetime. So why are Black children more likely to receive a late diagnosis? Well, there's many reasons, one of them being inadequate health insurance. You know, sometimes it can be very costly to get an autism evaluation done. And then there's access to care issues. There's not enough providers and there's waiting lists and sometimes transportation is an issue. Then there is stigma. You know, sometimes people don't want labels being placed on their child. And then black children are more likely to be seen as a behavior problem. This disparity is also taking place within the Hispanic community. Hispanic children are also more likely to receive a late diagnosis with language barriers being an added issue that affects care. These are the signs of autism. Lack of eye contact, regression of skills such as speech, difficulty understanding the feelings of others, unusual or intense reaction to the way things smell, taste, feel, or looks, repetitive behaviors like flapping, spinning, or rocking, restrictive interest, resistance to change, repeating the same words or phrases over and over, delayed speech and language development. So what is it like for families supporting someone with disabilities? Well, it's many different things for many different people. It's lows and highs, it's high and lows. I can really only speak for myself, but what I can tell you is that it started off with feelings of isolation and grief. While my friends were taking their kids to t-ball and soccer practice, I was taking my son to therapy multiple times a week. We didn't go out to eat often because the background noise, the happy birthday song, and chairs screeching would often trigger meltdowns. It was a very difficult time. But then I started opening up and sharing our family story, and I found a supportive tribe of people I started reading the blogs and the social media posts of adults with autism to get some much needed insight and it was very helpful. Then came the beautiful parts. I remember when my son first called me mommy. He was six years old. I remember when he tried Chick-fil-A waffle fries and actually liked them. I remember when he started to overcome some of his fears and when he started to make new friends. And then I began to realize that my child's future was so much brighter than what society would have me to believe. So what's it like being an African-American father of a child with autism? Well, I can tell you what it's like to be an African-American father of two children with autism. First and foremost, when we first found out the diagnosis for our first son that he was autistic, I couldn't handle it. It was hard to accept. After accepting that my child had autism, I realized I had to change. I had to become a different type of dad. I needed to learn more and more about autism so that I could understand how to help my son. Autism is not a curse. Now, when they first got diagnosed with autism, it was rough, but then we realized that we have to learn how to raise them. That means we had to learn as much as we could about autism, understanding that not only are they African-American, but they're going to have a disability and they have to learn how to make their way in the world with the challenges that African-Americans have to face. But we haven't given up and we know that they're going to have a good life because we're going to do everything we can in our power to make sure that they have the tools they need to be successful. And although they do have the label of autism, that does not mean it will stop them from being great people. It doesn't mean they cannot have a family. They can have a life just like anybody else. They just got some things that are different. So what's it like being a father of two children with autism? I say it's one of the greatest uh, challenges that I have faced that I am more than willing to face with my beautiful wife. What is 
the church's responsibility for those with disabilities and their families. Did you know that families affected by autism and disability often find it difficult to attend church together as a family unit? We often talk about not forsaking the assembly of ourselves with other Christians, but in order for that to happen, some things are gonna to have to be put into place. And these are things that everyone can do. First, be compassionate. If you see a child acting out in church, don't attack the parents or the child. Show love. You don't know what may be causing the child to act out. And you don't know what the parents went through to get to church that morning. Next, find ways to help. Talk with these families and ask if there's any way that the church can help make things easier for them, especially as we deal with COVID-19. There may be a need for help with grocery shopping or childcare or an accessible way to attend church and so much more. And lastly, examine your own thoughts on disability. In the church, we put so much emphasis on prayer and healing whenever someone is disabled. And there's nothing wrong with praying for healing. But what if we focus more on the fact that we are fearfully and wonderfully made and that God has a purpose for everyone, whether they're able or disabled? And what if we affirm those with disabilities by making our services more accessible for them? What if we hired staff with disabilities? What if it was the norm and not unusual for church members to see those with disabilities in their congregations since 20% of Americans have disabilities? Representation for those with disabilities is important and there is biblical precedence for it. There are many people in the Bible who had disabilities and prominent roles. Look at Moses and Isaac and Jacob and Mephibosheth and so many others. Their disability didn't stop them from fulfilling God's plan and our churches shouldn't be a stumbling block. For more information on this topic, I highly recommend the book, Disability in the Church, A Vision for Diversity and Inclusion by Dr. Lamar Hardwick. He's a pastor in East Point, Georgia, who by the way has autism. He has some amazing insights on this topic and I cannot recommend his book enough. He will be a guest speaker with us on a special webinar hosted by the Autism Faith Network that will be on April 18th at 4 p.m. We hope that you will be able to join us. Wisdom, thank you so much for allowing us to be a part of this special event. You can find out what we're doing over at our website, autismfaithnetwork.com. We're also on Facebook, Instagram, and Pinterest at Autism Faith Network. You can also find us on Twitter at Autism Faith Net. Thank you and you guys be blessed. Come on, let's give a round of applause for Jamie and Tanya Nash. Thank them for that very informative uh, lesson on autism. And so today we salute them and the parents who have children who and I like what, what, what um, Tanya had to say there, that it's not a showstopper, and I'm paraphrasing, it's not a showstopper, it's not something bad, but it's our job to help them be able to navigate through life with, with autism. And so I thank them for sharing and enlightening us here at Worthy Season today and, and giving us a better outlook on how we can deal with uh, autism. And so certainly I'll be revisiting that video and, and making sure that we as a church are looking at this and how we are planning and, and helping those. Um, she used the word that's one of my favorites, and it's a word from Jesus is that she said that we can be compassionate. Jesus said in the scripture, or it says in the scripture about Jesus that when he looked on the crowd, he was moved with compassion. And as a church, we have to be a church that has compassion on, on everyone, regardless of where they're from, uh, their color, their gender, where they come from. As, as believers, we should be people of compassion. And so, uh, once again, I thank Tanya and Jamie Nash for uh, enlightening us and showing us uh, how it can be done. And for those parents here at Worthy Season that, that deal with autism, for my family members who deal with uh, uh, children with autism, uh, we salute you today. We salute you, and we continue to pray for you and encourage you and let you know that as a family, we are here for you and that we love you. Now, would you come on, put your hands together one more time for Jamie and Tanya Nash.
Awesome job. Awesome job. Uh, as we're moving forward, the other, other thing I want to take a moment here and do is I want to invite uh, a very special friend of mine for over the years. When we moved here in 2000, we, uh, in 2000 uh, June of 2000, uh, the house that we first were living in was next to uh, uh, some people that I never thought that we would know some almost 21 years later in one way or another. And uh, recently I had a conversation with this brother and, and he's doing some great things here in the Warner Robins community. And I said, hey man, I like what you're doing. I said, can't nobody tell your story like you can. I can elaborate on it. Uh, but I want you to come to the church. Pick a Sunday that you can come. And I want you to talk to the people of God about what you're getting ready to do in this community for our young people. I think that it's so powerful um, uh, that, that I, I didn't want this church to miss out on it. So without further ado and without uh, spoiling what he's going to talk about, uh, would you all help me welcome to the stage uh, Mark Ivory? Come on. Thank you, Pastor. You take this off. I can assure you I've had my uh, COVID vaccine. <laughs> Thank you so much for inviting me, uh, Pastor McCullough and co-pastor. I really appreciate it. My name is uh, Mark Ivory. Most of you guys may know me as Coach Ivory. Uh, I've been doing it a long time. And uh, this is the final year for me being Coach Ivory. Well, I guess I'll be called Coach Ivory probably forever. But uh, this is my last year. I'm retiring from the Houston County Board of Education at Thompson Middle School. And three years ago, uh, the Lord put it on my heart to start a program learning center and um, I ran from it ran from it tried to do other things but God has a way of uh, getting your attention you know laying you down and getting your attention uh, last March I had a uh, aneurysm I had a stroke uh, getting up getting ready to go to school one morning and uh, I was in the hospital over a month well about a month uh, in Augusta and uh, during that time God showed me some things and, and basically he was like you know why are you running from what I called you to do. And for a long time, I thought he called me to coach <laughs> and, and to teach kids. And I think that was part of my calling. But um, that season, that season in my life has ended. And it's time for me to move on to a different season, to my purpose, to walk in the purpose that he has with my life. So the name of the organization that I started, I am the uh, founder and executive director. And uh, the name of the organization is the Warner Robins Learning Center of Georgia. Uh, great program. I've been putting it together for a while. But we're going to take kids uh, starting at age uh, or grades uh, three through seven. And we're going to bring them in after school. And it's going to be a STEM based program with science, technology, engineering, and mathematics. So, you know, my background, my, my degree is in uh, math, math. I got a, a degree from Xavier University in uh, Louisiana. And uh, I taught in the CDEP program at Fort Valley State uh, during the summertime and uh, also Upward Bound program. I, I mean, God has allowed me to be in a lot of places and do a lot of things uh, to bring this program to where it's going. But uh, we're also going to uh, work with grades three through seven, but we're also going to pair uh, these kids, these 30 young men, with mentors uh, to mentor them through this process. Once these kids uh, complete uh, seventh grade and they're ready to move on, we're not going to uh, depart from them. We're going to stay with them. We're going to monitor them all the way. And uh, the end, the end uh, part of this program, we want to be able to offer scholarships to these kids if they want to go to college, if they want to go to technical school. Uh, that's the end part of it. But we're also going to be taking them on field trips throughout the uh, year, throughout the fall and uh, the spring of next year. Uh, we'll go to all kind of museums. We'll go to Atlanta. We'll go to um, uh, the zoo, different places. Any place that we can find some STEM activities, we're going to take them. Uh, we know that I know, and being in education a long time, uh, education is the key. It is the key. So I think we all need to partner uh, in this project that God has put on my heart. And, and I, I heard somebody say, it is your vision, it's my vision that God gave me this vision, but I really believe it takes the village, it 
takes the community. It's going to take all of us to do this thing. So I, I appreciate any support that you can give us. Uh, we have a website, uh, wrlcga.com, um, and it explains a lot of what we're doing. I was very fortunate to be at Thompson Middle School, and I know a lot of people may look at, oh, man, Thompson, you know, we're full of uh, thugs and all these different kids that go to the other side. But listen, it's been a blessing. I've been the athletic director over there for 17 years, and uh, you, you don't see that a lot. And I, and I love Thompson Middle School. I love the diversity that we have there. Our school was actually uh, the first Title I certified STEM school in the state of Georgia, and w which is a great accomplishment. And um, thank you. But I've, I've been fortunate to get those teachers that got us to be certified STEM, a certified STEM school. They're going to be working in the program that we've started. So I'm, I'm very blessed and fortunate to have those people on my team. And uh, it's going to be a great, great, great program. So I welcome you to come out and check it out. Uh, we'll have a STEM uh, camp this summer uh, for sixth grade, one week for sixth grade, one week for seventh grade, and another week for eighth grade. And uh, on, the, on each Friday of the week, uh, we'll take those kids on a field trip, uh, try to get them some more exposure. But we're going to be building some robots this summer, and it's going to be fun. So um, it's going to be really fun. So if you know anybody uh, that would, would like to come out, bring their kid out and be a part of it, we, we welcome uh, those uh, young people. And this is for girls and boys during the summertime. But in the fall, we're really going to concentrate on uh, young black men, who's that young black boy who's an uh, at-risk group in our community. It's an at-risk group. So that, that's what we're going to serve. And then next year, we're going to expand to female. So it's a process, and uh, we're willing to walk it. But we appreciate uh, uh, you, Pastor, co-pastor. Thank you for letting me come. Uh, thank you so much, uh, Brother Davis, uh, for your, your effort in helping me out. I thank you so much. Thank you, Pastor. Appreciate you. Man. God bless you. Thank you so much. Why, why are you standing here, Mark, before you go? I wanted to say that um, I don't know if you remember uh, when we were neighbors. You and I rode. You invited me to ride with you to Tweaks County to, to the football, football game. <laughs> yeah, your, your best friend was coaching there at the time. That's right. And um, I remember on the ride back, you were sharing with me this call that you had on your life. Right. And I, I, I said, man, you know, whatever it is, God every time will reveal it to you. And I didn't push him to go get a Bible and start preaching. And I think that that's one of the mistakes we make in the church today, especially our community is that uh, everybody ain't been called to get in the pulpit and preach and, and, and certainly everybody has a call. We're ministers of reconciliation but but I like what you're doing because you're called now. You're walking in it and, and I know that God's going to bless you and the resources and everything that you need are going to come your way and so I commend you for stepping out there. It takes faith to step out of the boat, man. Yes, yes it does. But, but the point is, is that you stepped out. With that being said, I want to say uh, that we believe what you're doing here for our community, for our young people, what you have done for so many years. Yes. Uh, most people, you talked about Thompson Middle School, but most people don't know that you were the pipeline for Northside High School. And many of the great players that went on to play football <laughs> at Northside High School started with this coach right here at Thompson Middle School. And so uh, there should have been a head coaching position years ago for you somewhere. Yeah. But God has a greater <laughs> plan. God has a greater plan, Amen. And, and so today we celebrate you and what you're getting ready to do. Uh, Word in Season Ministries on this day pledge. Uh, you got a, a, a May 8th, uh, you didn't talk about it. May 7th. May 7th, you got a, a, a gala. We a have gala. a gala. It's a yeah. fundraising gala at the, uh, the Curtis Event Center at 2050 Watson Boulevard. And I have a young lady coming in. Well, a couple of young ladies. One young lady is uh, Latanya Holmes. Uh, she's going to come and she's going to bless us with a song there. Uh, you can look her up, Google her. She's 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 pretty good, and uh, she's from our community. And her her, her uh, father is Clifford Holmes. Uh, he's on the city council, so uh, she's traveled abroad and been on Broadway. You name it, she's done it. We have another young lady, uh, Miss Latresa Billings. She's also uh, from humble beginnings, beginnings like myself. Uh, she grew up on Virginia uh, Virginia Drive, and uh, she's gonna be she's president elect right now. Uh, pharmacy in the state of Texas. So it's a great accomplishment for her. 
and for our community. Yeah. Yeah, so, so thank you. So, so on that weekend, it's the same weekend my son graduated from college. Right. We talked right. about that. And right. so the possibility of me being able to come to that gala, it may or may not happen. But what I want to say to you today is that on behalf of Word and Season Ministries, myself and co-pastor Frida, and also the UPS store there in Bonaire, uh, the church is going to give you $500. Thank you so uh, much. Co-pastor Frida and I are going to give you $250 and then another $250 from the store. Uh, Amen. $1,000. Amen. 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 Thank you so much. Thank you so much. I think that that covers a table at the event that night. It does. It does. Uh, so if I may add, push that towards that, will that be okay? Oh, yes. Uh, yes. That, yes. How many people sit at a table? Six at a table. Uh, so I'd like to open it up for six of y'all to go and attend. Perhaps this is something you're interested in. It'll be a great event. If it's you, let me know. Your way has already been paid. And so for that, uh, once again, we celebrate what you're doing, and we, we just believe God uh, is, is in what I, I young people Thank you for stepping out there and doing it. Come on, Word of the Season. Would you congratulate Thank you. Me? Thank you. Amen. God Thank bless you, man. God bless, bless you. you. God bless Thank you. Thank you so much. God bless you. Thank you. A few minutes ago, the praise team was singing, and they said something that was when I was a little boy. It was one of my favorite passages to read, and it said that... Um, in Revelations 1 and 14, as you guys are preparing to come back up, his head and his hairs were white like wool, as white as snow, and his eyes were as a flame of fire. His feet unto fine brass, as if they burned in a furnace, and his voice as the sound of many waters. And, and, and I won't read the whole thing to you, but, but I like as we move down to verse 18 of that passage, it says, uh, he said, I am he that liveth and was dead. And behold, I am alive forevermore. Amen. Now, this is where it really gets good because he goes on to say, and I have the keys of hell and death. And it was for many years that I used to believe that, that, that uh, uh, he lost the keys or that we lost because of Adam and Eve. But that's not what the scripture says. It never says that he lost the keys. And it wasn't until I went to seminary that I understood differently that, that he never lost the keys, you know. Uh, uh, it's just that those who were supposed to have the keys were not able to use them for so many years after the fall and the death of, of I'm sorry, after the fall of Adam and Eve there in the garden. But, but here Jesus reminds us, he says, I have the keys of hell and death. Now you say, that's, that's okay, Pastor, but, but, but why is that so important to me as a believer? Well, we go back and we look at the word keys there uh, or throughout the Bible. Keys mean authority. I'll say it again. Key, keys mean, how many of y'all got keys to your car right now? How many of y'all got keys to your car right now? That means that when you get out there in the parking lot, uh, can't nobody get in your car. That's your car. Am I right? Uh, that, that you have the power to twerp, twerp, or whatever you do, uh, in the words of, of Chris Tucker, or however you get in your car, you got the keys to get in there. Those keys say that you have authority to drive that car wherever it needs to go. Those keys say that you have the power and control over that vehicle. Well, I come to remind somebody today that, that because of who Jesus is in our life, that, that he's given us some keys. He's given us authority to walk in power and in victory. And no matter what we face, we are already overcomers. Why? Because I got the keys. I got. I command you to take authority over your life right now. I command you to take authority over situations. Yeah, yeah. You got the keys, amen. I command you to take authority over the visions and dreams in your life. I command you because who? Because Jesus already paid the price. Jesus already made the way. And if you believe that, you ought to be standing on your feet with me right now. Because here's what I love, because by the time I get over, over to Revelation chapter 4, because you know who he is and because you got keys, for the description in Revelation chapter 4 verse 8 says this, Jake, it says, each of the four living creatures had six wings and were covered with eyes all around them, even under its wings. Day and night, they never stopped saying, holy, holy, holy is the Lord God Almighty. And one of my favorites, who was? who is and is to come. Uh, whenever the creatures give glory, honor, and thanks to him who sits on the throne and who lives forever and ever, the 24 elders, the 24 elders fall down before him who sits on the throne and worship him who lives forever and ever. And they lay their crowns before the thrones and they say, you are worthy, our Lord and our God, to receive glory and honor and power for you created all things and by you 
by your will they were created and have being. If you believe God's word today, if you believe that you walk in power and authority and you know that it's only because of him who sits on the throne, somebody ought to shout, holy, holy, holy. If you know that all things are because of his will, and you know that things are happening in your life because of him, you ought to lay down your crown. You ought to lay down your position. You ought to lay down your title. You ought to lay down whatever you think you are and just say, God, you deserve all the glory. God, you deserve it. Come on, I wish I had a church that was saved because of your will. You get all the glory. Now, let me hear you. You get all the glory. Praise. Come on, praise team. Come on, that's it right there. Open up your mouth and give him the glory. Let's do it together. We give you glory. For you're worthy, Lord God. Hallelujah. Yes, the world will bow down and say you are God. Every man will bow down and say you are King. So let's start.
We just want to be with you. Oh, just want to be with you. Can y'all say it with me? Say, King of, feel this place. Just want to be. We just want to be. Just wanna be. That's my only desire. Yeah, come on, no music. King of glory, say. Feel this place. We just wanna be. Right in your presence, yeah. Just wanna be with you. Just wanna be with you. Just wanna be with you. That's my only desire. Just wanna be right where you are. I just want, Lord. I just wanna be with you. Oh, I just wanna be with you. Wrap me in your arms, yeah. I just wanna. be surrounded oh god yeah i just want to be with you just me and you lord god yeah i just want to be where you are in your presence god in your presence i just want Just wanna be where you are. You, oh God, is what I desire. One thing have I desired, yeah, and that will I seek after, after, is to dwell, yeah, to dwell, yeah, in the house of the Lord forever. Just want to be with you. Just want to be with you. So King of glory, King of glory. Feel this place. Just want to be with you. Just wanna be with you. Come on, just sing it just one more time. Lift your hands and your voice and say, King of glory. Would you feel this place? Yeah. Just wanna be. Yeah, just wanna be. Oh, King of glory. Place, just lift your hands if you want to be where he is today. If you have a desire to be in his presence. Come on. Just sing that song to him this morning. Come on, just in your own way. In his presence right now. In your own way. I know we're talking about 
fill this place and we think about the sanctuary. But come on, just put one of those hands on yourself and say, fill this place. Say, King of Glory, fill this place. Right where at nine times this morning, God, we just thank you. We give you glory, honor, and play, praise. We bless you, oh God. As we sing this song that we just want to be with you, God. So we ask you to fill us. We ask you, oh God, to just be who we need you to be and what we need you to be in our lives. Even right now, God, we open ourselves to you. We say, fill this place, oh God, this sanctuary, our individual lives. God, fill us till we won't no more. We empty ourselves, oh God, from every thought that's not like you, from every emotion that's not like you, for, for anything that's in us, oh God, that would keep us from being filled with you. We empty ourselves and we say, fill us, Lord, this day with your spirit because we need you, oh God. We can't do nothing without you. We can't move without you. We can't breathe without you, oh God. This morning, we're desperate for you. So fill us this morning, oh God. We give you all glory. We'll magnify you. We'll open up our mouths and say, God, you are worthy. We will proclaim that you get the glory. Come on, open up your mouth and declare in this place that God is great and greatly to be praised. Come on, come on, come on. Open up your mouth and declare that all over this place that he is great and greatly to be praised. Hallelujah, hallelujah. We magnify you, oh God. We magnify you. We glorify you. And we give you praise in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Bless God this morning. Come on, let's go to the word. I will not be before you long. Amen. I want to get you out of here in a, a decent amount of time. So <clears throat> I won't be for you long, but if you get your, your Bible and we're just going to go straight to our text this morning. Amen. Amen. Isaiah 61, 1 through 7. Isaiah 61, 1 through 7. And as I was preparing, you know, asking God what to, to preach, he took me to this text and to this message. And it's one that I, I preached before, not here. And, um, and he said, I want, you to, I want you to preach this word um, as encouragement to the people this morning. And I came, I just came to encourage you, amen. The spirit of the, of the sovereign God is on me. Because the Lord has anointed me to proclaim good news to the poor. He has sent me to bind up the broken hearted. To proclaim freedom to the captives and release from darkness for, and release from darkness for prisoners. To proclaim the year of the Lord's favor and the day of vengeance of our God. To comfort all who mourn and provide for those who grieve in Zion. To bestow on them a crown of beauty instead of ashes the oil of joy instead of mourning and a garment of praise instead of spirit of despair they will be oaks of righteousness and planting of the Lord for the despair, display of his splendor they will rebuild the ancient ruins and restore the places long devastated they will renew the ruined cities that have been devastated for generations. Strangers will shepherd their flocks. Foreigners will work your fields and, and your vineyards. And you will be called priests of the Lord. You will be named ministers of our God. You will feed on wealth of nations and in their riches you will boast. Instead of your shame, you will receive a double portion. And instead of disgrace, 
you will rejoice in your inheritance. And so you will inherit a double portion in your land and everlasting joy will be yours. Does anybody receive that word this morning? Come on, just reading the text gave me encouragement. Just reading the text gave me, uh, uh, just lifted my spirit because I'm sure you found yourself somewhere in this text. You found yourself in some place. You said, that's me right there. In the midst of this text, it may have been you that, that just said, listen, I'm in the midst of right now, I feel broken hearted. Some of you might say, that's me. I feel like a captive. Some of you right now say, I might feel like a prisoner to where I am right now. Some of you, God is saying, you may be grieving. And some of you, he said, listen, you may be mourning. But for every one of you in this place this morning, that someplace in your life, this text is here to encourage you this morning to let you know that greater is coming greater is coming come on come on declare that to yourself over your life come on declare it in your life right now just say, say it in the atmosphere where you're standing greater is coming come on come on declare it where you're standing right now for you for your family for your situation for whatever it is you're going through i'm in it right now but greater come on can somebody say greater is coming come on declare that and if you believe it give God a praise right now give God a praise right now come on bless God for your greater bless God that it's coming it's on the way right here in the midst of what you're going through right here where you are and how you feeling about what you're going through right here as you look at your bank account and it don't look right right here when things don't seem like they're okay I already know greater coming hallelujah hallelujah come on you may be seated hallelujah in this text Isaiah is talking to the Jews the children of Israel about what is to come after they have come out of uh, exile in Babylon he is telling them they've been in a situation all this time they've been in Babylon and they've been in this place of captivity they've been in a place where it seems like all things have been ruined and all places in their life are no longer able to to prosper he's beginning to talk to them and today I want to talk to you as we are coming out of this pandemic, come on, some things are starting to open up, people getting their vaccinations, and and and, and we've got some things, and, uh, and you know we have not been in exile for years, and we have not been in it as long as the children of Israel, but how many of you know that year of lockdown seemed like prison? That year of lockdown seemed like there was like, oh, God, there's, I, I want to go somewhere, but I can't. You know, I've never been to jail, praise God, and I hope to God I never have to go. But I understand that's what it's like is that you want to go somewhere, but there's boundaries and there's things that keep you from being able to be able to do what you want to do. And how many of you ever felt like that in your life, that I felt like I wanted to go someplace, but I couldn't go because of circumstances or situations or maybe mistakes that I've made. But even in this last time that we've been in in this last uh, period that we've been in in the pandemic I felt like sometimes like I just want to go somewhere I just want to do something and and sometimes it wasn't even physical how many of you can say I felt some things in my mind I, I felt like I was I was blocked in my mind and as we're starting to come out and we're starting to look at things and and the vaccinations are going on and praise God for, for, for the vaccine but how many of you know we're still covered by in the blood by the blood of Jesus I thank God now that don't mean don't get your a vaccine now okay let's just say that I'm covered by the blood come on we got all kind of other vaccinations we do them so anyway but anyway you, so you know we, we say that thank God for that but I'm coming out but but he taught begin to talk to Isaiah began to talk to the people and he began to talk to them about the years that they had been in lockup and they'd been locked down and they'd been in, in in captivity in Babylon and the first thing and I'm gonna go through this real quick the first thing he told them he says that they will rebuild the ancient ruins he began to talk about rebuilding that's the first thing 
thing I want to talk to you about as we're coming out of this and we're coming into and switching uh, back into uh, things opening up and slowly and we're getting back to uh, uh, going back, uh, getting our minds back. Come on, because some of y'all had to get our minds back to be where they were from last year. It's not, your mind still ain't there. It still ain't all. I'm still not all the way there. But as we begin to open up, there's some things that we're going to have to do. Um, even from last year to this year as a church, we're going to have to do some things as well because we went from being, I was looking at some pictures on Facebook and I was looking at how wonderful it was to have everybody in service. And I was looking at all the people with their hands lifted and people on the altar with laying hands on people and people hugging each other. Y'all ever go back and just go back and look at some of the memories. And then I said, God, we got to go back. We got to start all over again. And we've got to rebuild that. We've got to rebuild the trust. We've got to rebuild uh, all of the people's minds coming back to church because right now it's so convenient to just stay home and watch it on TV. We got there's so much we have to do to rebuild. And, I, and that's what the first thing he began to show me. He said, Isaiah told the people they will rebuild. Rebuild means to reestablish, cause to continue. Um, and, and so that's what that means to reestablish and cause to continue. A few years ago, my, my neighbor's uh, house caught on fire and, um, it burned down and so what happened was struck by lightning on a Tuesday and I guess it smothered and by Friday it was fully engulfed and the house was on fire um, and, 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 it, and, and they, they had thought they had taken care of the issue but it, it, didn't, uh, it didn't happen and so the, it was engulfed and so the house burned down but I remember being in the yard and my neighbors as they watched their house burn down and, and, and Stephanie was crying and, and, and Marvin looked at her and he said it's okay baby nobody died we can rebuild. It's just a house we can rebuild. And I began to look at that because she was looking at all of her memories and she was looking at everything. She had a brand new car in the, in the garage, burnt, just burned, just brand new car. All this stuff was gone. And he looked at it and he said, we could rebuild. And it took them a year to rebuild. But when they were able to, when they did, they were able to design the house that they wanted. Uh, they didn't just rebuild the same house. They built a better house. They bit that house had burned down. It was already built uh, when they moved in. So it wasn't custom for them, but this time they got to go and build it the way that they wanted to build it. Uh, the text says they will rebuild the ancient ruins. How many of you know that 2020 left us something that we're going to have to rebuild? How many know that 2020 left some things behind that it looked like it was destroyed, but God said, don't worry about it. I can still help you rebuild. There are some things in your past. Somebody has some things in your past that the enemy came in and he destroyed. Something you thought you would never be able to rebuild but I need to let you know that it doesn't matter how long it's been in a state that it's in God says I can help you rebuild it can you tell somebody just look at them I know you got your mask on raise your eyebrows or whatever that you might have been born in some situations and you might be facing some things but tell them God can still help rebuild it you may have gone through some stuff last year but God can still help you rebuild it you may have faced some circumstances and found yourself in an economic situation you said God, how am I going to ever dig myself out of this hole? But God says, I came and I came to encourage you this morning that no matter how deep it is, I can rebuild. God says, I've got the power and I've given it to you. And through me, I'll help you to rebuild it. I love what 2 Corinthians 5 and 17 says, and it talks about us and our lives and who we are as believers. It says that if any man be in Christ, he is a new creation, a creature. All things have passed away. Behold, all things are become new. I look at that a lot of the times, and it has to do with our salvation. But can I tell you that God can do the same thing with situations? That if you be in Christ, if you give it to God, God can take what was broken and shattered. He can take what seemed like was in pieces and put it back together again. He said, I can rebuild. He told me to tell you that while you were building or rebuilding you and while you are rebuilding, he said, be aware and be, uh, be aware of naysayers that will try to discourage you while you're rebuilding. Sam Ballon and Tobias, we understand that when they were building the wall, Sam Ballon and Tobias, they came and they began to just try to discourage them. They said, you can't do this. You can't build this. And Nehemiah 4, 1 through 3, they said, even a fox would run on this. It will break down. They said, no, no, you, you really can't. I cannot tell you that people are okay as long as you broke down. Yeah, they'll be your friends as long as you ain't got nothing and they ain't got nothing. As long as you broke, busted, and disgusted. But as soon as you start rebuilding, 
As soon as you start trying to get your life together, as soon as you start trying to make moves toward, toward bettering yourself, uh, here come the doubters. The, the same ones that were hanging with you when you were worried about nothing. Uh, you were boys, you were BFFs, but now that you decided to rebuild, here they come with, oh, you think you're better than us. Oh, you can't hang out no more. Oh, you too good for this or you too good for that anymore. And all you got to do is nicely let, nicely let them know, I don't have time to respond. I'm too, build, too busy rebuilding. I'm too busy for God to do what he needs to do in my life right now. I'm too busy I'm allowing God to rebuild some things. There's some things in my area, my life, areas in my life that have been broken down. And when I'm hanging out with you, I ain't getting nowhere. Come on. Come on. I know you. I know that's your friend. <laughs> But you got to be honest and let them know, listen, I, I got some things in my life that, that have put me, I made some decisions that have put me here. And, I, and I've been running and we've been doing some stuff that in my spirit I knew I shouldn't have been doing, but I can't do this. You got to beware of those people who will come up to try to come and, and, and pull, pull you down and come and try to say, no, don't do it. I need somebody in this place that God can rebuild. Remember, your opposition will not just come from those um, who, who you hang out with. Some people just don't like to see you accomplish anything. So they got commentary. Y'all know what commentary is. I, I, I like to listen to, uh, I watch sports, but a lot of times I just sit there and listen to what the commentators have to say. Now, some of them have definitely played the game, and so they know what they should have to, what they should say. But what's, it, what's amazing to me is when I go to high school games or I go to games and I listen to the commentary that's coming from the bleachers. <laughs> Coach, you know what I'm talking about? I ain't never been in the game. You ain't played in 30 years. But you got all kinds of, if they should just, I'd be doing it too. If they would just, why he keep running the ball? Why? Just got all kind of commentary about what's going on. Looking at the field. I've never played football. Just really learn. But I got something to say. How many of you know there's people in your life, they don't know what you're dealing with. They ain't never been in your shoes. They never had to deal with what you're, but they always got something to say. They always got to say, well, you, you know, if you just this, if you just that, if you hadn't of this, you know, you all, it's easy until you have to do it. It's a whole, how many of y'all found out in your life that it was easy until I had to do it? It looked like it was real easy until I had to put my hand to it. Then I realized this ain't so easy. But I came to let you know that the, the naysayers will come in the midst of you rebuilding. They will come and try to tear you down. They will come and try to stop the progress. But let them know that I am rebuilding, that the spirit of the Lord is upon me, and that he is allowing me to rebuild some broken areas in my life. The other thing he said he would restore. He said he restore and restore the places um, long devastated. Um, and so, and not only is God about to rebuild some things in your life, he's about to restore some things in your life that have been long devastated. I looked at that and rebuilding uh, the ruins is, is, is one thing. Uh, restoring the, is one thing, but when he rebuilds, um, he wants to rebuild those things that have been broken, those things that have been devastated. When something is, dev is devastated, it's ruined, it's completely destroyed, it's, it's destruction. Um, and it seems like it can't ever be put back together. But can I tell you, it doesn't matter how bad the situation is, nothing is too hard for God. How many of you know that God, the Bible says, all with God, all things are possible. All things are possible for God to be able to restore something back. The regular definition for, for restoring or for restoration means to return something back to the original condition. It means, um, you know, put it back. I'm going to restore it. Uh, I got some, you know, um, something I need to restore this furniture. I need to sand it down and, you know, restore it back. Put, you know, put a few nails in it or whatever. But what I love is that the biblical definition is that God's definition of restoration is to receive back more then was lost at the point where is the final state is greater than the original condition. How many of you know that God, God has restored me? I'm better than I used to be. <laughs> oh my God, like the restoration wasn't, because he didn't just put me back together. He put me back together better. He put me back together 
better than I was, and he restored me. And it says, listen, in Job 42, when Job, when Job uh, prayed for his friends, the Lord restored his fortunes. In, the, in fact, the Lord gave him twice as much as before. Um, so I will restore to you the years, uh, Job 2 and 24 through 25, that the swarming uh, locust has eaten, the, the crawling locust, uh, the, the consuming locust, and the chewing locust. My, greater, my great army which I sent among you, you shall eat in plenty and be satisfied and praise the name of the Lord your God who was who has dealt wondrously with you and my people shall never be put to shame God restoration it leaves you better not bitter listen when he restores you it's always better when he restores you he leaves you he leaves you soaring he leaves you thriving when you understand God's restoration in your life is always better than it ever was. Anybody say, restore me, God. When David would say, restore to me the joy of my salvation. What it was is give me something deeper. Give me something more. I want to receive more from you, God. I, wanna, I want when you restore me, God, don't just put me back where I was. Make it better. Anybody in this place say, God, make it better. Make it better. He also told them, he said, I'm going to renew some things. How many need some things renewed in your life? Uh, there, there, there's some, there, in, this, in this version, uh, it simply means not only did he, was he going to restore some things, he was going to renew some things, which means he was going to allow them to start over. So there's some things in your life that God says, I can restore, but then there's some things I need to start over again. Uh, there's a, you know, we just sing this song, Lord, make me over again. How many said, God, I need some areas of my life. I just need to, I just go to get rid of all of that right there and just let me be renewed every day that's why the bible says we got to renew our mind daily our mind has to be renewed daily because if i go back and you restore what was there yesterday it, i might be messed up today you know on a computer you can restore uh some of the stuff that was in the computer if it crashes there are some times that you need to restore it. and sometimes you just it'll crash so many times you just need to get a new one and I'm so glad that when I wake up in the morning, my mercies are new. I don't get to have to use them. He don't restore the old mercies. He just renew them in the morning. Anybody glad for some things in your life? And he said, I ain't going to just restore. I'm going to also renew. I'm going to start over in some areas of your life because it was just so, anybody say, it was just so messed up. I really just don't even need it. It was so messed up. I want some things in my life to be renewed. Start all over. Start fresh, God. And, and this is why I hear God saying people threw you away because of your past mistakes, because of who they knew you used to be. But God says, I will be like the children of, like the children of Israel and take what was left behind and make it new. God is going to allow you to take what looked like it was destroyed, and he's going to make it over again. I'm so glad that God says that there is still new as old as you are and as old as you may think you are God said there's still some new things I can bring out of you I can still renew some stuff I can start it all over again and anybody in this place that said God I got some things that got to need to be restored but I also need some things that need to be renewed I need some areas in my life oh God that I'm not too old and I'm not too young to start over again change my mind renew who you I know about you God and who I think you are in my life oh God help me God to be renewed and so I look at this we talk about doing new things when it's when it looks like our hope is gone God steps in and he says Isaiah 43 18 19 nor consider the things of old behold I do a new thing now it shall spring forth shall you not know it I will even make a road in the wilderness God's doing new things so, God, I want some new things in my life. Anybody need some freshness? Yeah, 2020 left a couple things stale. I need some freshness. I know they talk about what you can do with bread, leftover bread. You can make, you know, bread crumbs and you can make uh, a dressing. But sometimes it's just good to get a fresh, some fresh bread. Anybody just want some freshness in your life? I just, I want some newness in my life. God, I, I want to experience you in a whole nother way. I, I want to be renewed in my spirit. I want to experience your word in a new way God I want to see you in a new way in my life I just want a freshness of who you are God because I understand God that when I can see you in a new way God that I can give you glory even the more oh God that I'll give you praise even the more oh God come on somebody say renew me God renew me God 
He said, I, I, and I love this because he said, I, he said in the text, they will renew ruined cities that have been devastated for generations. And God said, it's for some of you, I'm going to use you to help bring that newness in your family. I know what it's always been and what everybody in your family has always done. You see, God, God set you apart. You're like, why do I seem like I'm so different? He said, because I had to bring something new. And your family kept doing the same thing over and over and over again. And here you go. You outside the box. You bring all this newness. You bring new ideas. Coach, you bringing something new to the community. I know what they've done all of the years and the years and what they've said, but sometimes God says, I'm going to bring you and I'm going to help you bring newness even to things that were in your past and in generation. He's about to use you to rebuild, restore, and renew what the, en what the enemy thought he had destroyed. Even in your families, somebody say, that's me, that's me, that's me. That's me. I can do that. You wonder why, why is it that you always got creative ideas and why is it that you always doing something? God says, I'm bringing the newness through you. You're not just different. I'm just, I'm helping them to see something different. I'm helping them to look at you and see that it don't have to be that way. I'm helping you, them, you to be the one that they can see Christ in and see that it, our family don't always have to do this. We can do better. We can be better. Anybody in there, is that, is that you, the person in your family that they look to say, you just ain't like the rest of us. <laughs> you, ain't, you don't think like the rest of us. It's because God is saying, I'm ready to do something new, and it's you that I'm going to use. It's you that I'm going to help to, to, to bring that and usher that into your family. I believe that. I believe that in this room, we've got, as we always know, we've, saw, we've said in this church, difference makers. you difference makers because you make a difference wherever you are, on your job, in your family, wherever you are in your community. You, God has given, given you ideas, and he's saying, I'm starting over, and I'm helping you to bring restoration where wherever you go. The other thing he told him, he said, you're going to receive. And I love this because everybody ought to put your hands up right now if you're ready to receive. If you're ready to receive. He said, instead of your shame, you will receive a double portion. How many of y'all got some stuff you ought to be shame about? Just oh, put your hand up and just open one eye. So just... It's some things that don't nobody know. And you would be ashamed if they found out. Israel here is in the text there. He says to them, he says, you know, instead of your shame, because they've been in exile for all these years, and it seemed like so much has been uh, uh, destroyed in their life and what, they, what was left behind. And, and what was left behind was ruins. He said, but instead of being shamed, you know, instead of being ashamed of what was, what, you know, I'm going to give you double portion. He said, you will receive a double portion. You may have been through some things last year. Come on. And some of y'all in the last decade. <laughs> but God's saying, because you survived, because you realize that God is in your life, that this year I'm still looking for my double. Anybody, I know they said last year, I don't care, I'm still looking for it. I don't care if it's next year, I'm still looking to receive everything that God has for me. I'm still here to receive. Come on, anybody say, I'm still here to receive everything God has for me. Here's the thing I heard God say. He said, so many people got upset about 2020. Oh, what happened, y'all? What y'all said, you know, what 2020 was going to be this. 2020, and you know what? I still, in 2020, still look for blessings. As crazy as it was, as, as all the things that were going on, do you know I was still abundantly, ab abundantly blessed? Anybody was still abundantly blessed in 2020? I got anybody that can testify that 2020 wasn't like the whole world was saying, come on, I need somebody to stand on their feet and say, I got double even in 2020 in the midst of a pandemic. I still was blessed. Bills got paid. I paid off bills. I had money in the savings. My children were fine. Come on, anybody got double blessed in 2020 in spite of the pandemic? If we allow the world to dictate, they will tell us that 2020 was the worst year. C come on, baby. Not for me. It was not the worst year. And if, we, if you don't start, listen, what happens is, is we as believers need to testify. 
We don't need to fall in line with everything that everybody is saying. I remember I was looking out, I was looking online one day and I remember, you know, all the PPP stuff was out. And I remember they people were saying on this one post that it was a joke. PPP is a joke. Can't nobody get it. Can't nobody do this. You know, can't nobody do that. And I just began, I got on there and I said, that's not true. I got it for both my companies. And praise the Lord, I've got forgiveness for both of them. I don't have to pay it back. But I just got on it, and, I, and this one lady, she contacted me. She said, can you help me? I said, I sure can. I'll help you. I didn't know who she was. But I t- told her what she needed to do. The problem is, is that we believe the hype so we don't receive what God has for us. He said, instead of your shame, you will receive double. But if you got the Holy Spirit said, but if you don't believe it, you won't. If you don't believe that you can receive what God has for you, then you won't ever get it. If you always run in your mouth about, oh, you know, I know what they're saying about this in church. Listen, I don't care what they have to say. God is still able to do exceeding abundantly above all you could ever ask or think according to the power that worketh in you. Yeah, we had to stay in the house. But guess what? It helped me get more organized. Yeah, I couldn't go nowhere. But guess what? It helped me save something. Yeah, I, I wasn't able to see, uh, see, come on now. If you will understand, you know what I'm saying? I'm, I'm sure I passed over there talking because I, I did a lot of cleaning. I threw a lot of stuff away. I organized a lot of stuff. You know what I did this past couple weeks ago? Y'all, I went through and I looked at it. I was like, okay, you talk about renewed and stuff. So I went through my kitchen. And I went through my kitchen, and then God began to show me this. He said, and I'm, I, I know I'm just digressing for just a moment. This is what I need to tell some of y'all. I went through my kitchen, and I started looking in my kitchen. I opened up the silverware drawer, and my silverware drawer was packed. Anybody got like that? You just got Mitch match stuff all over the place. It was just packed. I didn't know where stuff was. And God said, clean it out. So I opened up the drawer, and I started cleaning it out. And, and that led from that to all, every, every area in my kitchen. I began to, I look at this, I had two and three of things that I didn't know I had. I kept buying it because I didn't know it was in there. Anybody else that I know, don't laugh at me because I know y'all do it. I had, all, <laughs> I had all kinds of stuff. God said, and he said, he said, clean it out so you can see what you have. Get it organized so I can show you what you need to do. And then his other thing, he said, get rid of some of that stuff. I took in some of that stuff. I got what we needed, put in what we needed. The rest of it, I gave it to people who needed it. God said, you get stockpiling stuff. You got stuff everywhere, and you just keep buying and keep doing. And God said, the reason why you can't receive is because you ain't got nowhere to put nothing. You keep asking me to give you stuff, but you can't. And I, half the time, I already gave it to you, but you don't realize it's there because you got so much other junk. You got so much, uh, oh, somebody said, oh, Jesus. I went in my pantry. Y'all know how much stuff I threw away? I couldn't give to people because of the expiration date on it. God said, he began to show me, he said, he said, he said that's like in your life. You got so much stuff for you, you don't expire. Because you ain't using it. And then he said, and then it's a shame because you can't give it to nobody. Because it's expired. And I I was inspired by someone else. They went through and they did their their cabinet, whatever. So I got the little containers and I put everything on, wrote the names on it. And when I walk in my pantry now, y'all, I just do this. I like it. Because I can see what I have. I don't have to, here's the thing, keep wasting time and wasting money buying things that I already have or do not need. God said, if you want to receive from me, you're going to have to clean up some stuff. You're going to have to empty out some stuff. You're going to have to make room for some stuff. He said, I'm trying to give it to you, but there is no room. How many of y'all going to look at your stuff now? I gave away old appliances. And I, listen, this, this lesson right here goes so much what I just did over the last couple weeks. Not only did I get rid of stuff and kept what I needed, I went through old stuff that really I was just hanging on to. It really wasn't working like it should have been. I threw it away and got, some, got the same thing but newer. 
Do you know what I'm saying? Like I just, I, we had this George Foreman grill. That grill was so old, y'all. I know it's sentimental, I get it. But every time I took it out of the cabinet, because it was so old, old it had this little part on it that um, where you could put the buns on the top. That's how old it was. And heat it up. But the little, every time I would take it out, that little part would fall off. Because it was just broken. And I just kept putting it on there. Just kept putting it on there. And kept putting it on there. And God said, that's what y'all do with all the broken stuff in your life. Instead of just getting rid of it and making sure that I can give you, I can give you something new. You ain't got to keep holding on to stuff that don't work no more. So I got rid of it. I saw some new things that I wanted. I said, you know, I've always wanted one of those. Let me get one of those. But guess what? I had a place to put it now. I would never get it because every time I would think about buying something else, I'd be like, well, where am I going to put it? Anybody like that? You just, oh, look at the look at testimonies. you like, where am I going to put it? God said, if you clean it out, there'll be a space for it. And so he said, listen, I want you to receive some things from me, but the way you're going to receive it is to clean it out. You're going to have to make some space. You're going to have to make some room. He said, because not only do I want to give you some, I want to give you double. He said, you'll get a double portion. All God is trying to tell you this morning, y'all, is greater is coming. If you will just prepare yourself where you are right now is nothing compared to where God is going to take you and what he is about to do in your life. Somebody ought to get happy right now, All right, right there, because you realize that what you've been through, it should have taken you out, but God rebuilt it. God restored and God renewed what should have been a lost cause, and now you're in a position to receive. The text says instead of your shame, you'll receive a double portion portion that sounds like greater to me somebody ought to lift your hand and declare I receive everything God has for me come on I receive everything God has for me I receive everything come on God I receive everything that you have for me somebody declare that put those hands up and declare it right now open up your mouth and tell them I receive it I receive it God I ain't gonna let it go I'm gonna receive it I'm making room I'm throwing some stuff out I'm getting rid of some things I'm looking at stuff that ain't working and it's broken and you said let it go I'm letting it go I ain't holding on to those memories but I'm letting it go God so I can receive Woo! because the enemy thought that what you went through last year and the last decade was going to take you out. He thought that you would walk away with your head down in disgrace. Uh, he, he thought that, you had, that he had you in a place where you would stop and go run and hide. But I'm looking for some people in this place that will say, I went through what I went through, but I'm not ashamed. I hold my head up high. I lift my hands and I open my mouth and I rejoice because I have an inheritance. The, and, and I'm about to walk into greater. I love what it says. He says, instead of disgrace, you will rejoice in your inheritance. And so after you receive, the next thing I need you to do is rejoice. Come on, anybody say, I'm ready to rejoice. I'm ready to rejoice. I'll hold my head up and I'll give God all the glory because I know who he is in my life and I know I'm about to walk into greater. See, you got to think about where you are right now and say, I'm about to walk into greater. Just think about where you're going and give God some praise. Don't worry about what you saw last year because I came to let you know greater is coming. Don't worry about the mistakes you made in the past because I came to let you know greater is coming. You can rejoice and you don't have to worry about what the streets and what they say because greater is coming. I don't have to hold my head down. I, I can rejoice and give God all the glory because I know greater is coming. Anybody in this place say greater is coming for me. Come on, say for me, for me, for me. Put your hands on yourself and say greater is coming for me. I'm rejoicing because the thing that should have killed me, it didn't kill me, but God rebuilt it. He renewed me and he restored me. I receive everything that he has for me. Somebody shout, I receive my greater. Now somebody rejoice in this place. Put a praise in the atmosphere that declares I am rejoicing because I receive my greater. I receive my double portion. I receive my inheritance. I'll make sure that I open my mouth at all times and I will rejoice. I will magnify the Lord. I will bless the Lord at all times and his praise shall continually be in my mouth. You will rejoice 
because God has given you beauty for your ashes and instead of mourning him he gives you the all of joy and the reason I can rejoice is because I'm clothed with praise I have a garment of praise instead of a spirit of heaviness I rejoice because he keeps rebuilding he keeps restoring and he is renewing and I am receiving I'll keep rejoicing because greater is coming and guess what he won't stop with one thing he keeps doing it over and over and over again and just when you think he's finished he says I'll do it again how do I know because in front of every one of those words is two little letters R-E when you say re on anything an R-I-N-G on the end of it it means it keeps going when you see I, it's going on and on so what you have to understand is when he redoes it and he's redoing it and I'm saying he's re, I'm receiving and he's renewing and how many of you know it's a daily thing that I'm looking every time I turn around, every time I get up, I'm looking for God to rebuild. I'm looking for God to restore. I'm looking for God to renew and I continue to receive and because I know he's doing all of that, I'll keep rejoicing just when you think he's finished he does it all again it gets greater and greater it gets better and better it gets gooder and gooder why because my god don't ever stop my god don't ever change and if i'll receive everything that god has for me i can wake up tomorrow and be excited because i know that today god gave me mercy but tomorrow it's new and because every time I wake up I can be looking for my greater every time I look up I can look for God to do something better than he did the last time I can look at what he did last year and said if he did it before he can do it again that's why I rejoice because my God will never stop restoring he'll never stop renewing he'll morning come on if you receive greater give God a praise if you know that God is restoring you so you can be greater if you know God is restoring you and rebuilding you so you can be greater I need you to say use me God because he's not just restoring you for you he's restoring you for his glory he's restoring you so he can get the praise he's restoring you so your life can reflect what he's done say look at what God is doing through me it is the Lord's doing and it's marvelous in our eyes what you see happening in my life is not because of me but it's because of God is there anybody in this place that can rejoice that God is still using you that can rejoice that God is still renewing you that can rejoice that God is still restoring you come on say God might be a hot mess but God can still clean it up my life may be in shambles but God can still restore it I may be messed up but God can still renew it I don't care where you are right now you tell the devil I will not stop here I will not be discouraged here I will not let you make me quit here cause greater 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 is coming it may look like I'm out for the count now but greater is coming it may look like I'm down but I'm not giving up greater is coming I'm getting up from where I am and I'm gonna give God praise I'm gonna keep rejoicing cause greater is coming come on give God praise Give God a praise that greater is coming, that greater is coming, that no matter where I am, I believe God, that I don't have to walk with my head down. I can lift my head and I can give God a praise. Anybody got an expectation for greater? You ain't got to have one. I do. You get what you expect. 
Does anybody in this place have an expect, expectation for greater? You don't sound like you do. Because see, when I'm excited about something, I ain't got to see it. I just get excited knowing it's coming. I get, y'all ever order something and, you just, and the food you know it's going to be good? You get excited for it, get to the table. You, that's going to be good right here. Why? Because you may have been in that restaurant before and you had it. You're like, ooh, this is going to be good. So if you, if you really understood who God was in your life, when I ask you if you're ready for greater, your expectation level should have went up to the next level. If you know how you praise God when he did that last thing, he ain't got to show it to you before he does it. You already know if greater is coming. And if he did all of that and what he's about to do is even greater, I need to give God a greater praise. I need to give God a higher praise. I need to give God a praise that shows him I believe. Woo! Because based on my experience, when God does something, it's maybe it's just my experience. Based on my experience, when God does something, do y'all know what I'm talking about? Based on your experience, when God does something, Based on what he's done in my life when God does something. When, when, he, when he makes a way, it's a mind-blowing way. Come on. Oh, when he provides, he over-provides. Based on what I know because I know what he's done for me. Does anybody in this place have a testimony that says, I know what he's done for me. And can't nobody tell it like I can tell it. Can't nobody understand all that God has done for me. So when I say it's going to be greater, I know this thing about to be good. That's just how my God does it. He does it and he does all things well. And so when I look at my experience of what God has done in my life, and when I make a declaration that greater is coming, I understand that what's about to come. Man, he blew my mind. Anybody, God ever blown anybody's mind? Like, oh my God. I knew you were good. Here's the thing somebody says, why are we so surprised if we, if we believe God? It just says sometimes when stuff happens, you just be like, wow. That's why we say he's awesome, because we stand in awe of who he is. And so when we stand in awe of who he is, and if I understand who he is, when I ask him to, be, to do greater in my life, or when he says to me, greater is coming in my life, I get excited. Because, oh, man, come on, lift your hands, just stand all over this place if you said, oh, man, oh, my goodness. It ain't even got here yet, just, oh, my goodness. I don't even know. I don't even know what it is, but oh my goodness! I, I, just because I know, oh Lord, what's about to happen? You about to renew, restore? Oh God, all of these things you about to do in my life, rebuild, and it's gonna be better than before. It's gonna be better than before. Come on, give God a praise all over this place. If you receive greater this morning, come on, give him a greater praise. Come on, give him a praise. Give him a greater, give him a, it's coming, a greater praise. Come, give him a, it's about to be greater praise. Give him a, I'm walking into my greater praise. Give him a, oh God, I can't wait to see my greater. Come on, give him a praise that said, I'm excited about my greater. Give him a praise that says, I'm praising you in advance because it's coming.
rejoice? Anybody got a reason to rejoice? Anybody got a reason to give God the glory? Come on, come on, come on, give God the praise. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Now I need you to praise for your brother and sister. That's about to get greater in their life. I know you received it for yours. Now go ahead and put your hands together for somebody else. Come on, put your hands together for somebody else. That's about to get their greater. Come on, praise God for somebody else. That's about to get their greater. we thank you how many said God thank you for rebuilding in my life thank you for restoring thank you for renewing I'm ready to receive and I'm gonna rejoice we give you glory this morning oh God we thank you for those who are under the sound of my voice God this morning that heard your word may their spirit be encouraged this morning God the greater is coming that as we begin to open back up and we begin to go out and we begin to, God, get out into the community and do different things, that we understand, God, you kept us and you kept us well, but greater is coming. We understand, oh God, that you are the, you are the one, oh God, that we look to, that we don't have to hold our head down, that no matter what state we find ourselves in right now, brokenhearted, grieving, mourning, whatever it may be, that it won't always be this way. Oh God. It won't always be this way, that you're giving us what we need and you're building us in our life. God, we give you glory, God. We bless you. We magnify you this morning. We give you glory, oh God. Come on, put your hands together this morning and receive the word. Receive the word this morning. Hallelujah. We bless your name, oh God. Come on, put those hands together one more time for greater is coming. Come on, put them together one more time for greater is coming. Come on now, put them together for the woman of God who brought the word on this morning. Come on, thank God for the word that filled this house on this morning. Come on, thank God for the word that fed your spirit on this morning. Hallelujah. For about 30 seconds, would you just praise God, amen, for all that he has done, all that he's doing. And what for what you know that's on the way. Come on, hallelujah. He's worthy. He's worthy. He's worthy. He's worthy to be praised. And for that, we thank him on this morning. We just thank God right now. There may be one amen under the sound of my voice to say today is the day that I need to accept Jesus Christ as my Lord and Savior. Whether you're watching online or whether you're in the sanctuary, you're sitting here and and greater has not come. Things have not been right for you. Maybe it has to do with the disconnection from our Lord and Savior. I invite you today to say, God, I need you. God, I need you to be my Lord and my Savior. God, I need you to come into my life. If you're here today, if you've not accepted Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, if you're not sure today that if you die, where you will open up your eyes on tomorrow, today you need Christ. Amen. Amen. You need Christ, not just because you need a, a place to spend eternity, but Jesus promised us there in John chapter 10, verse 10. He says, I have come that you might have life and that more abundantly. Today, I offer you life. Amen. And not just life here, but in the life to come. If you don't know him today, this is your moment. Amen. Would you pray with me, wisdom, for those that don't know him, that would like to accept him, that are under the sound of my voice. Dear God, we thank you today. Come on, say it with me. Dear God, we thank you today. We recognize that we need you as our Savior. We recognize that you died for our sins, that we might have everlasting life. On today, oh God, I ask you to forgive me of all my sins and accept me into your kingdom. On this day, oh God, I acknowledge 
you as my Lord and Savior to serve and to become a disciple on this day. And for this, I thank you. Now, if you believe that, if you believe someone received that, come on, put those hands together. Thank God somebody's coming back. Thank God somebody's acknowledging him as their Lord and Savior. And so for that, we give you praise. We give you glory. Amen. We want to thank God for those, amen, that may be looking for a church home, amen. We invite you to be a member here at Word in Season Ministry, where for every season, we believe that there is a word in season, a word that would inspire you, words like you heard today that will let you know that greater is coming. Well, we believe the Bible from Genesis to Revelation, amen. We believe that God is still the King of kings and he's still the Lord of lords. And if you don't have a church home on today, we invite you to come and be a part of what's going on here at 1520 Fagan Mill Road, Word in Season Ministries here in Warner Robins, Georgia. And for that, we are grateful and we give him all the praise and all the glory. Come on, one more time. Would you put those hands together and give God a round of applause for all that has been said and done on this day? Come on, somebody shout, greater is coming, greater, greater is coming, greater is coming. Hallelujah, hallelujah. We magnify you, oh God. We bless your holy name. Listen, you may be uh, here and, and you've enjoyed the worship on this morning, amen, both in the sanctuary and online. We invite you now to be a part of this area of worship, amen. It's an opportunity to give, an opportunity uh, to sow into the kingdom of God, to sow into the word that you have received today. And as you're preparing yourself to give, amen, I'm going to just allow the praise team for just a moment to minister us. Let God speak to you, amen. We know that, that our tithe is, is not negotiable. It's 10% of our earnings. But we also uh, believe that God has uh, offered a space for us to give in the offering, amen. That, that, that I'm asking you to pray about today. God, what shall I give? What, 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 God, give like God has blessed you on today. Amen. Amen. Don't give sparingly, but give like God has blessed you on today. Come on, praise team. Hallelujah. Come on, can we just confess and believe that on this morning, greater is coming. Say, greater, greater is coming. Come on, somebody say, greater is coming. Greater in your life speaking today greater is coming he's preparing you this morning greater is coming come on speak it like you believe it greater is coming we receive your goodness lord i said greater is coming <laughs> yeah greater is coming come on would you raise it up somebody say my y'all take us out right there. Father God, we thank you. We praise you. Thank you for all that's been said and done in this place. Now, God, as your people go out, oh God, God, station your angels of protection around in Jesus. You be a fence around the people of God, around their families, oh Lord. God, we thank you, oh God, that greater is coming. Thank you for continued blessings on each and every one of your people, oh God. And Lord, I thank you, oh God, because of your blessings, oh God, the kingdom of God will continue to grow. We will continue to do your will and your work in this day and in this time. And for that, we give you all the praise. Listen, God bless you. Check your emails, your tech messages for happenings this week, Wednesday morning prayer at 6 a.m. Listen, word in season, God bless you. And remember, come on, remind them one more time, praise team. Have a great week in Jesus' name. Yeah. Yeah.
somebody say, it's mine. It's mine. If God said it, yeah, that settles it, it's mine. Say, it's mine. It's mine. It's mine. It's mine. Say, it's coming. It's coming. My greater, yeah. You got to believe it, yeah. I know what he has for me. It's coming. It's Make room for your greater. Make room for your greater. He's renewing you. It's yes, it's coming, y'all. He's restoring you. It's Say it's coming. It's Even rebuilding. It's Say it's coming.